Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're back with the MacBook Pro 15 because a lot of you wanted to see what it looks like when it runs Windows and how well it might perform against a comparably equipped Windows laptop and that's what we're going to do today. So we actually got uh, Windows up and running on here and I installed it uh, via a little SSD, this little Samsung drive here. In fact, the entire Windows installation lives on this and I can boot from this and not from the internal drive on the Mac. I'm going to, uh, in the next day or two, post a video on my extras channel, lon.tv slash extras where I show you how to do that. It's actually not that hard, uh, especially if you've read some of the ways to do it on the web. This way is actually easier using something called Windows to go. So I'll show you uh, how I got that all working. And what I wanted to do in this video was take a look at the Dell XPS 15 and see how it compares to the Mac because these are kind of the same class of computer. They're premium laptops. Uh, they both cost a good amount of money. The Dell here as configured is about $2,000 and of course our MacBook came in around $2,800 and I wanted to see what the $800 gets you if you're doing an apples to apples on pardon the pun, on Windows. Now, if you want a good Windows computer, uh, you don't need to buy a Mac, of course. There are a lot of great performing Windows PCs like this Dell and the uh, Microsoft Surface and others, but I did want to see where this Mac comes into play uh, when we're looking at the same thing, and that's what we're going to do here in a minute. Now, I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that Dell provided this XPS 15 to the channel back in February. We got a full review of this uh, on the channel, which I'll link to down below. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and nobody is reviewing this this content before it is posted and the Mac here I purchased with my own funds. All right, so let's first take a look and see how Windows runs on the Mac and it actually runs really nicely primarily because uh, Apple has a full set of drivers that you install with one click after Windows first boots up and everything uh, just comes to life. You get your screen scaled properly, you get all the drivers installed and you're good to go. Uh, one thing I am noticing is that the trackpad is a little flaky. So some of the things that Mac OS 10 detects properly doesn't always get detected that way on Windows. Windows. You can see here as I'm holding my thumb down and trying to drag some windows, it's not uh, as consistent as it is uh, on the regular OS X experience. So there's probably some driver optimizations they still have to make for this trackpad. This is still a very new product, of course, at the time that I'm shooting this, but uh, you will find some things that don't work as nicely uh, as they might on the Dell. Now, a lot of you were curious about how the touchpad works on here. And once you get those drivers installed, you get the uh, basic touchpad interface here. So I can go in and adjust the uh, screen brightness. I have my escape key, of course, as well as my keyboard brightness and some media controls. So pretty much a basic uh, layout on it. Now what I can do though, uh, is go into the bootcamp control panel that they have as part of your driver package. And uh, there is an option in the keyboard section here to have the function keys take precedence. So if I go over and uh, select that option here, you'll see down below my function keys, uh, at least they should here if I hit apply, uh, the function keys will now switch over and uh, be there versus the media control keys. So you can uh, swap those things out, but as far as I know, there's no Windows software that will take advantage of the touch bar, nor would I expect there to be. And I do have to say that running Windows on the Mac is a very nice experience actually, and in some ways it looks nicer and runs faster than it does in its native operating system because I think there's less of an overhead uh, for the Windows user interface than there is on OS 10. So things do feel a little snappier. The text looks a lot sharper. The scaling just does a nicer job on uh, Windows with this device than it does in Mac OS 10. So I was really quite pleased with just how nice everything looks. And the display itself also contributes to how nice it looks because it's got a very uh, nice contrast ratio, really deep uh, blacks on it. It really looks a lot nicer than many of the other Windows displays I have uh, played with, including the uh, Dell here that I have next to it. Now, part of the reason why the Mac display looks better is that there's less layers on the screen. So the Dell here has uh, some thick Gorilla Glass as well as a touch layer. So that will uh, add some layers to uh, the screen, which will cloud up the image slightly. It doesn't look that bad when you look at it by itself, but when you compare these two side by side, uh, really there really is a difference, and uh, the difference is in favor of the Mac. But the Mac costs $800 more than the Dell does with very similar hardware components inside, but I think Apple, given that they were shooting for a higher price tag, uh, probably had some more leeway on the kinds of display technologies that they uh, worked into their devices. Now, before we get into the benchmark comparatives here, I did want to let you know what each machine has under the hood. So the Mac here has an i7-6820HQ quad-core Skylake processor at 2.7 gigahertz. It's got 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM, and it has an A9 
AMD Pro 460 GPU with four gigabytes of video memory on board. Uh, the Dell here has an i7 6700HQ processor that's also a Skylake quad-core chip. It, though, runs at 2.6 gigahertz, so the, the uh, processor is slightly slower, but the RAM is slightly faster because it's got 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM compared to DDR3 on the Mac. Uh, the Dell also has an NVIDIA GTX 960M uh, graphics processor with two gigabytes of video RAM, uh, and of course, it's got that 4K display. So now let's take a look at some benchmarks, and then we'll look at how those benchmarks might translate into real-world applications with some games. Now, in my original review of the MacBook, we looked at the Geekbench GPU, and the Mac was running that test on OS X, and the Dell was running that on Windows, and the Mac did better. It got a score of 56,591 on that test, versus 48,852. Uh, but now that I have Windows on here, I was able to run the 3D Mark benchmark, which is more of a gaming benchmark to see how it might do uh, with games and some other things that uh, might be more of a real world application. And on that test, the CloudGate test, we got a score of 16,933 on the Mac compared to 16,784 on the Dell. And the uh, performance really is very close here. Now you'll notice though that uh, the Dell did better on the two graphics tests while the Mac did better on the physics test, which is more CPU intensive. So it really is kind of a toss-up here uh, between the two of them. I also ran the Skydiver test, which did show a little greater of a disparity between the two, uh, where the Mac scored 14,111 uh, versus 13,385 on the Dell. Uh, but really, they're very close in uh, overall performance here, especially when you look at that final test, the combined score, uh, 67 frames per second on the MacBook compared to 65 on the Dell. Again, kind of a toss-up. Uh, the last test I ran was a 3D Mark time speed by test, which is a DirectX 12 uh, test that 3D Mark just added recently. On that one, they were still pretty close also. The MacBook scored 1,562 uh, compared to the Dell's 1,331. Uh, so they were actually closer on the CPU test on that one than I expected, and uh, the Mac did slightly better. But really, the proof is in the pudding when you're actually running a game. So what I did is I uh, put the exact same settings into Grand Theft Auto V. What I did is I had the uh, NVIDIA experience on the Dell uh, give us the optimum settings, and then I applied those same exact settings to the Mac so we can get a real apples to apples comparison running the same benchmark on the same game with the same settings. And uh, you can watch here and see for yourself, they really did perform right about the same to each other. There might be a few spots where one does a little better than the other and then uh, something else will take place and they'll actually flip positions here. So they're really, uh, to my eyes and everything I have tested, both that game and other games as well, uh, there is really no difference between these two computers when it comes to gaming on them. The Mac will do fine, uh, but the Dell will also, and it will save you some money too in the process. So I don't think there's really a discernible difference here in gaming performance. And I think you'll see when you're doing other types of work on it, uh, it'll be generally the same performer overall on those things as well. Now you'll also recall we tried running Rocket League on the Mac uh, during the review before in OS X, and it ran, but it didn't run as well as I expected it to. Uh, it is running much better in Windows. In fact, almost double the frame rate with the same settings for the most part. So uh, really a much better gaming experience when you boot your Mac into Windows than running it in OS X. So there you have it. The Mac here runs at about the same speed as this Dell does, and the Dell has been out uh, for almost a year now. And I'm sure after the first of the year, when everybody revs their hardware, uh, most of the Windows manufacturers will have computers that will be running Windows faster than uh, the Mac will run Windows or its own operating system. So that's always the trade-off here when you buy Apple. Uh, you're not often buying performance so much as you are buying industrial design, battery life, and all the other things that uh, us Apple users pay a premium for. And that's been the case from the get-go. If performance Performance is the most important thing to you when buying a computer. Uh, you have a lot of choices now at the sub $1,000 level. In fact, we looked at a Dell computer probably around the same time we reviewed this one back in January, February of, of 2016. That was about $800 and was exceptionally high performing given its price tag. It just was very bulky, very heavy, didn't look as nice as this one looks like, but really you can get a very nice computer that is often aimed at gamers for uh, very little money that will do a lot more than just gaming. It will certainly do great with video editing, uh, CAD, and other design work as well. So there are some very good choices out there if you are on Windows or have applications that are not Mac specific if performance is the most important thing to you. Uh, for Mac users, though, it's good to know that you can run Windows on this Mac uh, as well as you can uh, on a high-end Windows computer. So you do have that flexibility, and I will be doing a quick how-to video as to how to get Windows installed on an external SSD like this one so you don't have to use up your space when you want to go cross-platform on your very expensive but very nice-looking Mac hardware. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.
This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.